think there's too many actors that are currently in a situation where Calvin Harrison Jr. is right now. Uh, I want to say 2019 was a very important year, at least in terms of a lot of uh, strong indie work, films like Loose, films like Waves. We'll get into that stuff uh, in the interview this week. But 2020, it's, it seems like there's a level up. It's going from, you know, you know, smaller, you know, buzzy, you know, critically acclaimed things. And now you were in, in, in the photograph earlier this year. You know, you've got the high note coming out with some some very big names. Kevin Harrison Jr. How are you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. I'm chilling. I, I, I got my do-rag on because I didn't know I was going to be on camera. <laughs> so, no, it's a look, though. It's a look. And play, I mean, this is quarantine. You could have had a robe on. It could have been anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're, we're all at home slumming. We're all the same people at this point. <laughs> Yeah, man, I feel you. That's real. That's real. Now, you know, we mentioned the photograph, and then there's this. And thinking about your 2019, we actually had um, Stella McGee on the podcast not too long ago. And she like, said, you know, we were talking about the photograph, and she was like, I didn't know Kelvin could smile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it out. I can't take her. That's dumb day. <laughs> Like, what's it like to, you know, you've done some really intense, like, you know, really involved roles. What's it like to just lighten up a little bit? I mean, <clears throat> I'm not that serious in real life. I'm boring, but I'm not serious. You know, <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm, I don't think I take anything that seriously besides, like, my job. Yeah. But um, but I, when, I, like, when I first started, I wanted to be on the Disney Channel. Like, and I was like, I wanted to like, be, like, the loud kid. Like, I wanted to be like Raven's cousin on that, sort of, <laughs> like Kyra, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to be a kid on all that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, I, 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 um, I think when I got the roles that I got, it was more so like, a, that was more shocking to me than trying to be fun. I don't understand comedy, so I will say that. <laughs> that is an element that I'm trying to figure out, but I do know how to have a good time, so. Uh, is that what it was? You, I mean, how soon did you know that Tracy Ellis Ross was going to be in on the film? And was that a factor in you being like, hey, I'm down to be in the high note? Oh, 100 percent. I think um, uh, it was like I, I said no to the movie twice. Because oh, I was wow. like, I don't I don't think I was like, find the Chris Brown of this generation. Mm. And like put him in the movie. Um, but don't, <laughs> don't put me in the movie. <laughs> um, but when I found out Tracy was doing it, I. I really wanted to meet her. Um, you know, I, I really, I love all her work and I love the way she speaks in, in public. Um, and I was like, that is a, she's an extender for me and like how I want to, 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 to communicate to my, 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 um, my, my journey in the industry and mm. give back to other people. I, I just think the, the way she does it is just so graceful and um, grace. And uh, <laughs> I, I think that was an element to it, but, you know, it was, a, I mean, like I said, I didn't get the part at first. So there was that too. So there was a long process involved in that. But, I, you know, I think she, she definitely fought for me. And I'm always grateful for, for Tracy. Talking about you working with T uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, it's also interesting because, in, you know, in, as we mentioned earlier, the photograph, you were also working with Lakeith. And, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that you guys have similar trajectories in terms of like, not just how good you are, what you're doing, but the type, you know, as choosy as you are with the roles, you know, do you right. ever, you know, were, were, did you guys bond it when you guys worked on the photograph? Um, do you ever think about, you know, the other people that like, when you were working in the photograph, were you and Lakeith having like similar uh, patterns and like styles of working? How did that relationship work? Um, you know, I, I was such a huge fan of Lakeith. I'm always a fan of everybody always. And I think, when I met him, I, I was just nervous. <laughs> and so I was nervous, I get weird. And they were just kind of like, I remember we went to dinner that first night. It was me, Issa, Lakeith, Stella, and Jasmine Cephas Jones. And we went to Miss Lily's in New York because this is a Jamaican spot. And uh, it was, it was just like, bro, you're you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> And I just, I was just like, yeah, and you're just like, all right. And so that was how we took the tone off. And I was just, I was always just trying to make up for it. But then at the same time, I was like, whatever, I'll just be that weirdest intern. It fits for the movie, I guess. Um, I remember one day I was just like, yo, I love you in Short Term 12. And he was like, all right. And, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, when you're in your birthday, you're a Leo, right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I mean, 
uh, I was like, you love the Lion King. He's like, why do you know that? You <laughs> <laughs> ran through like the IMDb fun facts before you met him and shit. Yeah. I was like, I did not know how to start this conversation, but he's been cool. He actually has um, texted me a few times since quarantine's happened. I think now we're, we're way closer than we were during the movie, which is cool. Oh, that's um, dope. It does seem like you have a, a very um, concentrated effort on making sure you don't play the same roles. Like at least have a, a little nuance in everything you do that where it offers like a new challenge. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, with every script, you know, I, you know I get, I, it's easy to get a lot of the same things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and what I also have to understand is that my agents, they're incredible at their jobs and they're so smart. They're not a young black male that, you know, that it grew up from 1994 to 2020 they don't know mm -hmm. um so it they can only do what they think is is um is, is quality and so i have to kind of filter through some of those things and kind of go well how are we expanding how do i get to what's my intent with the conversation um where what do i want to what do i want to challenge my community on and other people people that don't look like me on mm -hmm. what do i want to challenge myself with um, those are all things I have to kind of be aware of. So in every role, I do try to figure out, is this, a, um, sometimes I look at mass chapters, you know, I think Monster, Monsters and Men, Loose and Waves, that's one chapter for me. I was really trying to tackle um, Black excellence mm -hmm. and, and some of the things that kind of get, uh, that kind of we have to deal with with that in different versions of that from different parts of the, of the country. Right. Um, and this next chapter is something different. Um, <clears throat> So I, 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 I think um, I look at it in, in terms of as I'm working through it, as things evolve, as the scripts come, what does this add to the conversation of my body of work? So if you looked at it, you can almost look at it like it's a book. Mm -hmm. um, chapter one, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Actually, chapter one is, is um, just slavery pictures. Because I did Roots, roots <laughs> Underground, um, So I'm a Slave. Chapter one, the histories. <laughs> yeah. Now, how do, how do you feel, though, when, like, you, you do a film like Waves in that chapter and you see or you hear that Travis Scott is like, yo, that film's crazy as fuck. Like, were you, did, you, did you see when... Yeah. <laughs> what was your reaction when, when, you, when you heard about that? It was... Uh, I was just like... I, you, know, you know, those guys, they always make me a little... Like, I never know what they're going to think. I work with Travis on this movie called Gully. And, yeah, uh -huh. and, he was so cool, but you know, they don't talk much. They don't yeah, talk, right. much. you never really know like what they like, what they don't like. If, you know, I mean, Waves is a tricky movie too because a lot of people were triggered by it in a, in a way and I understand that. And I think, you know, Waves has its own, you know, Waves has its, that's a whole, the Waves is a tip, tricky one to talk about. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, it is really cool to know that it is resonating with some people and they are getting those elements and they feel like they can identify with that boy in some way, because I did pull from a lot of like, I pulled the inspiration for Tyler is Travis, is Frank Ocean, is Tyler the Creator, it is um, Chris Brown. It is, you know, there's a lot of these dudes um, that he might have looked up to as he was growing up. Um, and so it, 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 makes you, it makes me feel good when they kind of like, like the movie. <laughs> and they like the music <laughs> and the movie, and they feel like the movie, you know, they, they fuck with it. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned that the the discourse around waves was there was a little bit of triggering it there. Had, did have you did you feed into that at all? Did you look at any of that stuff? And if so, did it bother you that you know people were having these strong opinions about the film? I mean, I see most things. People send me everything. Okay. So I see all the negative things. I see the positive things, and at the end of the day, you know. What I've had to come to terms with is that I can't make a perfect movie, and that I like once again I know why I did Waves, and I know what my intent was with doing a story like that. Um, I also knew some of the complications that could come from doing it the way we were doing it. Right. But what it did was it sparked conversation, which, and when it comes to race in that movie. Um, and some of the stereotypes that could be perpetuated. I do think that it's important that um, they're still talked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if they can come across negative. Um, because I think the white people also need to see it. They also need to hear it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think they need to feel some of the burn. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, that wasn't the intent. 
And with that particular thing, the intent was to talk about a father and a son and some of the pressures that happened with that. That's what that movie was about. But um, other elements kind of come into play when people don't really know the, the backstory of it all. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a, it's a, I'm always good with conversation. I'm always good with conversation, good or bad. Yeah, so. that's dope. That's dope. Uh, you also, um, we had Pamela Adlon on the show who recently worked with us, Sterling K. Brown, on This Is Us. And she called him, she basically called him the GOAT. You know, she, she had nothing but, nothing but great things to say about Sterling K. Brown. So can you talk to us about your experience working with him as your father, no less, on the way? <laughs> yeah. America's dad. America's <laughs> dad, SKB. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Sterling is, uh, Sterling is like, I remember when I first watched Sterling on like People vs. OJ, and I was like, man, like, what a craftsman. I, I love someone who really understands the craft of acting and like can do it effortlessly. And he was so emotional, but strong and just, just clean, a clean, like I just, a, just a real clean performer. And um, this is, this is another version of that. And I think it's because he's such a gentleman and he under, he, he he's really intelligent. He's well read. Um, he's always listening. He's a great listener. He's, he's always supportive. And I think he always he has nothing but love to give to, to, to everyone. And I, um, I think that's kind of the key. There's no ego with Sterling, you know? I, I, it, it's easy to have ego too. Cause you sometimes we want to get caught up in our agenda, what we want to do, what we think is best for our careers. And Sterling's not really thinking about that. He's like, what's best for the overall? And, what, and, and, and why did you want to do this young man? And like, what, how can I do to help you? How can I do to bring you, you know, some some comfort in this? Um, and that's that's why he's the, the goat to me, you know. And going back to what you said about representation, did you and he kind of build together to work with Trey in terms of, you know, building that family in waves and, and putting forth like the clearest cut representation of the black family and like the specific story you want to tell about that? Yeah, I mean, Sterling came in once most things were done mm-hmm. um and then he kind of shaped ronald more once that his character once he came in but a lot of that world building was with me and trey in the beginning mm-hmm. um and, and you know with with you know what what i love about trey is that he he has so much love for people and he is not scared to admit what he doesn't know mm-hmm. um so if he, with that script, it was like the script was, you know, he was asking me questions about who I was, how I grew up, what my parents were like, what my sisters were like, what was I interested in at the time, what were some of the complications and obstacles I had to overcome. He took it all in as best he could and tried to implement it. Then once I got the script, it was like, okay, well, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't look right. I will excuse this because I don't understand this particular experience. This is not me, but we're not making my life story. Right. We're making a kid in Florida. And I know people that that would exist in this space. Therefore, why not? Um, I wasn't trying to limit. I guess my whole thing was like, I, I refuse to limit um, the, the experience of this character because he is a character and put him in a box because of what I think blackness is um, mm-hmm. versus what I know my experience is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also wanted to be conscientious of some of the themes, but it's also a movie, you know? So <laughs> yeah. <that's- laughs> Uh, you wanted to have drama, you wanted to have mm. excitement, you wanted to go somewhere. And I think Sterling also understood of that as well. So we were all on the same page. Because me and Sterling's conversation before he even started, he was like, he, he came up to me, he, he was like, listen, do you know what you're doing? And I was like, yeah. He's like, are you sure that you know what you get involved in? Mm. He's like, I don't know, because I don't really get it yet. You know, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, you know, I think, I think that I want to show up a broad spectrum of our existence. Why we asked for these roles and we got it, so why not do it? He was like, all right, that's really what I just wanted to hear. Let's do it. Okay. And I was like, all right, play me, but all right. <laughs> that's um, so, yeah. That's awesome. Now, the, the one thing that um, we have to ask you about, just because the news has been buzzing around, I don't know what the confirmation is, but there's talk that Kelvin Harrison Jr. might be joining a particular HBO show that's got a, a, a highly anticipated second season on the way. Can, is there anything big you with can the say, teens? Yeah, big with the teens. Is there anything you can say about okay. you maybe showing up on season two of Euphoria? I wasn't talking about it for a while, but you know, 
We're in quarantine, YOLO. I mean, yes, I'm doing you for it. <laughs> Talk about it. So, I'm excited. Um, you know, right before quarantine, we're about to start our first day, like the mm-hmm. next day. And we got locked down, but the, t- the camera t- test was sick. And, you know, the fittings were sick. And the table reads have been amazing. The scripts are so great. And um, I don't know. Everyone's really excited for it. Everyone, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be. Were you a fan of the show before? Um, yes, yes. I, I mean, I watched it for Alexa because we had worked together and I was like, right. I got to see what God's up to. And then <laughs> um, I ended up falling in love with the show. I just think Sam, you know, I work with Sam on Assassination. You know, I basically have two lines in the movie and it's like Kelvin and all my friends are in this movie. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I just love, he's a great writer and, and a, a brilliant storyteller. And I think the aesthetic and the world building that they do on that show is so unique and, and um, he really pushes boundaries as well. So I'm excited to step into that space and do my part. What can you say about the character? Because obviously it's going to be different, but I watch a movie like Waves and I can almost see like that Tyler character fitting into the Euphoria world seamlessly. Uh, I'll say it, it is nothing like Tyler. Interesting. Um, I don't think if you had, I've never seen a character like this. Period. I don't think a character like this is, I could almost argue that it's not been done. Wow. It's, it's interesting. It is definitely a character of the time. Um, and that's all I got. He's, he's, he's interesting. Fire. What's up, guys? This is Kelvin Harrison Jr., and you're listening to the Watch Less Podcast with Kelvin Frazier.